Um, sorry for leaving you hanging. I um, have owed you the third installment of Gems and Jewels for a while now. But we ha I had some te technical difficulties with my external hard drive and, you know, getting replacement parts for things is a little hard these days. Um, but now um, we're back with the third installment of Gems and Jewels. This one I think is the easiest one because there's no rulers measuring. Um, you don't have to do any straight lines. Um, I think that this is going to be the best one yet. But um, you will need either colored pencils or markers to color it in because color is really what makes this. You could do it in black and white with just a regular pencil using value to show what you wanna show but it really makes a huge difference um, to add in that color and make it look really bright and beautiful. So I'm gonna show you how to do this with colored pencils, either with just one color or with up to three different colors, choosing a light, a medium, and a darker um, colored pencil to blend everything together. Um, uh, we're also gonna go over how to do this with marker painting to do this successfully with markers, you also want to have water and a paintbrush and a white crayon. That's important. Um, so without further ado, let's get to it. And I will show you the basics of how to make this gemstone really look dimensional, um, look kind of 3D, and to look like it's just glowing with light. To make this round gemstone, of course, we need to start with a circle. There's no need for it to be a perfect circle, but if you're more comfortable, you can absolutely trace something round instead of drawing it freehand. To color it in, we're going to use four different values, which go in four different areas of the gem. Our lightest color or lightest value goes in the smallest oval that's a little bit towards the bottom. The next darker value is going to go in the middle in a circle that's a little bit larger. A dark value will go in the bigger circle around that. And the very darkest value is going to be the outline of the whole circle. For this example, I chose to use yellow and green combination. To color it with three colored pencils, I needed to choose a dark, a light, and a medium. So by choosing two colors that are neighbors on the color wheel, I could do dark green as my dark, yellow as my light, and a yellow green as my medium. If you'd like to use just one color, you should practice making four different values. A super dark, a darkish, a medium, and a super light. Now we have to add these values to our gem. First, we're gonna fill in the lightest space, that little oval, with our lightest color. In my case, it's yellow. Next, we'll add our medium color, which for me was yellow green. I'm being careful not to color over the yellow, and I'm going to work slowly and start lightly so that I can build up the color to just the right amount. I'm gonna color in both my medium and dark spaces because eventually I want a little bit of that yellow green to be mixed in with my dark. I am gonna stay away from the edge though because I want my darkest color to be just that dark green. Now I'll switch over to my darkest color, that dark green. I'm gonna press down super hard so that I get the darkest color that I possibly can get from that colored pencil as the outline of my circle. Now using that same colored pencil, I'm gonna start coming in from the edges. Starting lightly, I'm gonna blend that whole dark space into a gradient. I want it to be darkest on that outline and then gradually blend in to the medium color in the medium space.
going over the whole thing with my lightest color will help me to blend it all together and it also will help tie all the colors together because now they all have a slight hint of that lightest color. Last but not least, I'll pull out my eraser. First, to make sure that my light spot is still very light, and then to add a shine. To make it look like the surface is shiny, I erase more or less a curved line and a dot along the edge between the medium and dark spaces. Now let's take a quick look at how to do this with just one colored pencil. For the most part, it's the same, but a little bit simpler in some ways. Like, while I'm drawing the circle, I might as well outline it super dark. Then I can fill in the whole circle with a lightish medium value using my eraser to make that super light oval towards the bottom. From there, all I'm doing is blending a dark to light gradient in from the edges towards my lightest oval. And just like before, my final step is using my eraser to make a little line and dot along the edge of where the dark starts to turn to medium. Either option ends up looking so beautiful. Since with marker painting we can't use our eraser, we're going to use a white crayon to help keep certain spots light. So as we blend that outline color into the middle with our water, just like with watercolor, the color won't stick to the crayon, keeping those spaces light. Just like before, we have to start with a circle. Next, we're gonna need our white crayon. To make sure that you don't put any unwanted color on your circle, make sure to wipe it off before you use it. I always start by outlining in crayon to make sure that the marker color stays inside the lines. But you could also choose to outline with a crayon that matches your marker color. To make your light space, if you don't feel comfortable eyeballing it, you can draw an oval lightly in pencil first. But either way, I like to color only side to side to make it look a little bit more natural. Just make sure to color very thickly and don't color all the way to the edge. Then of course we can add our shine line a nice curved line, a little bit in from the edge, really heavy with crayon. Switching to our marker, we need to do a nice thick outline around the edge of the circle. If you want, you can also add a little bit more right under the shine line for a little extra depth. Now we need to grab some nice clean water and a brush, scrub up all that color from our outline, and spread it out all over our gem. To give us a better range of value and to make sure that we don't cover up our white, I'm going to dab it with a piece of paper towel and then blend the color in the way that I want it to look. In the end, I want to see a gradient of dark along the edges to light in the middle. And voila! I'm all done and just have to let it dry. It has been quite an adventure going over all of these different ways of doing gems and jewels. I'd love to know which type is your favorite and see pictures of what you've been working on at home. Thank you.